Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome again to our Wednesday 15 minutes podcast. Remember, we started this series of teaching last week, Monday. But do you know what? I will just beg you to subscribe to my YouTube channel by pressing on the subscription button. Then a bell comes out. Then you press on the bell. Then you are a subscriber. Then you can go and watch from last week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then this week, Monday. And then today is Wednesday. I just want to continue exactly from where I start on Hebrew 13, 4 to 6. Where I said saying that uh, women are emotional beings and men are creatures of sight. Now, to a woman, teaching on the subject sex, pleasure, pressure, to a woman, sex, to a woman, a, a woman hardly wants sex, either married or not married. They are never they are not interested in sex like that now listen to this why a woman will want a sex is always in exchange for the love that you have shown to her either you are married to her or you are not married to her so that's why as a woman be very careful with a man who is not married to you but who knows your love language if you don't keep off him it's with time you submit to him to his demand so like I use Hebrews 13, 4 to 6 to explain. Marriage is honorable in all. It's honorable in all. And the bed is not defiled. But warmongers and adulterers, God will judge. Who are warmongers? Warmongers are women who have sex for money. Now, who is an adulterer? A daughter is a married man who is having sex. But now I analyze this verse. I said, listen to this. Why didn't the Bible say, but adulteress and adulterers, God will judge? Because adulteress is the direct opposite of adulterer. But well, didn't use adulteries here because it's not considering the subject of sexual immorality. What is considering here is the fact that a woman is given sex for money, and a man is paying for sex because to a man, sex is a need. Men need sex the way they need here to survive. I listen to me now. And a woman, a woman girl can sleep with ten men in a day. You know what she's looking for? Is money. So you give her money, she gives you sex. So, 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 sex for a woman is to appreciate your love to her, even if she's your wife. Even if she's your wife. So, as, as, as a man, stop jumping on your wife as if she's a legal prostitute. No, listen to me. Even legal prostitute, even, even, even prostitute. Something must leave your hand for her. Now that's what I'm saying. Your love language must always leave you for your wife. For her to open her legs for you. So if you must survive as a man, you must understand Hebrews 13, 4 to 6. Now verse, is, verse 5 now says, Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be contented with such things as ye have. Did you see now? He's talking about materialism. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. So, God is encouraging, Paul is encouraging us, I believe Paul wrote the book of you, he's encouraging the women to learn to trust God and not use sex for money outside their marriage. But in the marriage, in the marriage, whatever you can do to get your wife, speak a love language, get it. The Bible says the bed is not defiled. To a woman, sex is an appreciation for love before it's, before it's a pleasure. Especially the ones that their love language is gifts. Why to a man, it's a need. The same way he needs food or air to survive. If you need to entice your wife with gifts before having sex with her, especially when you discover that it is a love language or applying any of the other love languages, that does not, that does not mean that you are paying her for sex. Paul said, the married bed is not defiled because you have, because you gave her gift before and after sex. Bed is defiled if you did that with someone outside your wife, according to Paul in that Hebrews 13, 4 to 6. So what I'm saying is this. Listen to me. Bribing your wife, if her love language is gift, bribing her with gift to have sex with her, you have not defiled the bed. It does not mean that you are treating her like an adult. No, no, no. You see, that's a love language. That's a love language. That is, listen to me. If you know that your wife's love language is gift, during the day, pick up small gift. You are coming from office. Buy suya. Do you know what I'm talking about now? She likes gifts. 
she lies gift. So that's what that's what Paul used the language. Marriage is honorable in there, and the bed is not defied. As long as the person you are exchanging gift with, or you are speaking a love language, is your wife. But when it is outside your wife, then the bed is defied. The bed is defined. So meaning that you must you must always understand your love language, your, your wife's love language, and speak a love language so that you can speak her into sex. Don't listen to anybody who will tell you otherwise. A cock does that too, to get a hen's attention. If you do this, the married bed is not defined. This do not make your wife a warmonger. She's your wife and it's your bed. One manga is a woman who exchanges sex for money as a profession. Men don't sell sex, but they pay for it. This is why a woman must be very careful with who she trusts with her emotions, especially when it's not your husband. Gifts can make your emotion to betray you if it's coming from one man all the time because you are an emotional creature. Emotional creature. And I have written this to say that husbands should give their wives gifts every time once you have discovered this is a love language or speak a love language and not only on a birthday alone gift uh, on, a, on a birthday alone gift a gift and time with her alone or speaking a love language can do that please don't be stingy to them spoil her with gifts even now that you are married continue with what you are doing during your courtship days with her that made her to say no to everyone else but yes to you it will take that to maintain her as well even though she is married to you now once close once close is not a proof that you will always be close though you are now married a woman is designed to take in with no outlet in her body to give out to you by creation while the man is designed to give out to her all the time so a man was designed to give the woman was designed to to take in that is the way god have designed that's the way God has done. That's why I say that's why we know that gay they are just fooling themselves. Because a, a gay gives his anus to another man to penetrate. While God gave your anus to push out your poop. You see? So that is the wrong way. But God gave a woman an anus to do to push out poop. But God has already given her an inlet to take in from the man. So that's where God has created it. So you should always know that and play your role effectively as a husband in your marriage so what i'm saying is this see from that hebrews 13 4 to 6 marriage is honorable in all and the bed on the fire but one mongers and a daughter's god will judge now paul now went ahead in verse i said let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have for he has said i will never leave thee nor forsake thee so that we may boldly say the lord is my helper and i will not fear what man shall do to me you discover that is meeting materialism with sexual statement here now, because he's trying to explain to us that a warmonger is not an adulteress. A warmonger is a woman who gave out sex for money. So you see, that is the way women are. Now, your wife will not always want to have sex. That's the way God has created them. Until when she's in the bed before, she wants sex. I will, you, will see, you will see that very shortly now. Now, because of that, wisdom demands this. That understand your wife's language, speak it every time. If you speak your wife's language every time, listen, not the day that you want sex alone. Speak the love language every time. In fact, let your wife not predict, not predict when you want sex. Do you know how that can happen? When you speak a love language consistently, she will also give you love consistently because you know why? Because women always give sex to her. She believes that, oh, my husband has been wonderful to me. My husband has been so lovely, has been so sweet. Oh, how can I appreciate my husband? She will give you sex. Now, that's the way a woman sees sex. But like I said, a man does not see sex that way. A man sees sex like, like a need. Like we saw there, a daughter and the warmonger. The daughter went into the warmonger, needed sex like he needs food. You know, you pay for food to have food. He, and a daughter in this case, pay for sex to have it. Because to him, sex is a need. He needs it to survive. He needs it to survive. Okay, let's push on. Now, husbands must know their wives very well. Because apart from being emotionally attached, to gift either from you or, or someone else with an evil intention to take advantage of her with time they also desire pleasure from sex with you though she may not voice it out even at old age they do want pleasure in sex and Sarah voiced that out in Genesis 18 12 hear how Sarah puts it 
Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself, saying, Genesis 18 12. Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I have waxed old, shall I have pleasure? My Lord, being old also. Did you see that? Did you see that? That's a woman telling us that there's pleasure in sex. But do you know what? She has lost, they have lost that pleasure because of old age. But of course, when Abraham got married, sorry, when Sarah died, <laughs> Abraham began to fire from both cylinders. That to show you that age does not even know emotion in a man. But here, Sarah was talking. Prayer said, therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, after I was school, shall I have pleasure? So women also want to have pleasure. Mean that Sarah has had pleasure in sex. They want to have pleasure. So that's why Sarah was telling the angel, say, ah, my guy is old. Will he be able to give me that pleasure? So women want to have pleasure. So if you think that your wife does not like sex, <laughs> ask Potiphar's wife what she wanted to rape Joseph for in Genesis 39, 7 to 12. Did you see that? Did you see that? So you see, so we should not get it wrong. We're going to read it. I'm going to show it to you. We should not get sex wrong. So women also want to have pleasure in sex. The same way men also want to have it. It is true, they are emotional beings. They will not always want to have sex. Want to have sex at the beginning. In fact, like I said, so don't approach your wife straight for sex. No. It will bounce back. Just speak a love language. Speak a love language. You know what? They are emotional beings. Now, to a woman, sex is not a need. The wife is not thinking about sex throughout the whole day. No. It is men that think about sex throughout the whole day. She's not thinking about sex throughout the whole day. She's probably preoccupied about how she's going to cook and manage the house and clean the house and manage the house and do everything throughout the whole day. But the man is busy calculating sex. So what do you do? Learn to speak a love language throughout the whole day. If you speak a love language throughout the whole day, I listen to you now. She will give you sex as a compensation for your love to him, to her. Well, like I said, don't make mistake. Women also want pleasure in sex. So I'm going to be running on with this on Friday when I will continue reading from that Genesis 39, 7 to 12. From here, I want to tell you that Jesus Christ is Lord. And I will see you in our Friday 15 minutes podcast.